and we're live. Hi, it's Alison from The Barn and the Bay. I am here today to create a video live as part of our wedding planning toolkit, which is designed to take the stress out of some of your wedding planning and let us help you. So it's specifically aimed at couples who are getting married here at The Barn and the Bay in Northumberland, but it will be useful to any other couples getting married in similar venues um, where there's a DIY element or a flexible approach to your day, which makes it quite difficult to plan the day uh, when you've got so much flexibility but we're here to help with that. So in this video we are going to cover your itinerary, how to plan it, what to consider and how you're going to make your day flow well. Uh, we'll be using this guide that we've produced, you can see it there, uh, so I'd recommend that you go to our website, there's a little link up there somewhere there it is uh just so you can download the guide and you can work through that with me so please feel free to save this video and revisit it once you've downloaded your guide so i'm going to give you some tips from our experience so that you don't waste money time have awkward pauses in your day or even worse that you end up rushing through the day and you miss bits and you don't enjoy it to the full so if you have any questions please contact our coordination team the links are below in the comments so pop them a message if you've got any questions at all and they'll be able to help you whether you're getting married with us or if you just want some general advice about getting married in a flexible venue so i'm going to run through the document uh, for those of you who haven't got it please bear with me and um, like I said, you can download it from the link below and, and revisit this video at any time. So I've broken down our itinerary into um, several, I don't know if you can see this, several times um, up here for your ceremony time. So that's the first thing to consider when uh, you book your registrar or your celebrant is have a think about what the impact of your ceremony time is going to have on the flow of your day. Uh, so there's quite a few little tips that we have on that because a lot of couples go for maybe an earlier time uh, because it's slightly cheaper with the registrar and you could end up spending a lot more money looking after your guests if you've got a longer day so it's, it's something that you have to consider. So we can down our um, itinerary guidance in different times so we've got ceremonies 11, 12, 1, 2, and 3. And if you've got an earlier or a later ceremony, you can just adjust the timings um, with the guidance. And it's just to give you some thoughts on that. So uh, preparation time. One of the things that couples forget is that um, your wedding doesn't start when you arrive. So you're going to have um, vendors and suppliers who are going to need access to your ceremony site or your venue before you're going to get there. So the most important thing to think about on your day is try and take as much of the stress away early as possible. So don't be thinking, oh yeah, we can just pop up if you're staying on site. We've got accommodation here and a lot of our couples get married um, not far from where they're staying. So the temptation is to say, oh, such and such will be around in the morning. Um, one of the ushers, maybe the groom, anybody. Um, it's not the best idea to rely on one of your guests or one of your wedding party to be there um, because in the moment of the day, people get caught up in other things and panic and um, it's best to have somebody professional looking after that for you. So speak with your venue coordinator and make sure that somebody is going to be on site. Uh, we always have a venue coordinator on site ready um, to welcome any of your suppliers. Make sure you know the access times that suppliers can get in and communicate that between your venue and your suppliers. So preparation time, um, make sure there's somewhere for you to get ready. Know where you're gonna be, let the venue coordinator know where you're gonna be. So we have a couple of places where people can get ready and if, um, if we don't know where you are, we're there to help you on the day. So we need to know um, where you're gonna be and, and what your plans are. Think about what happens when your guests arrive. So, who's going to welcome them? Um, usually a few of the ushers are a, a good um, tool to have here. So you can plant them. You'll usually have a bar um, or somewhere where that your guests are going to um, meet. Uh, it's a good idea to have ushers there, but it's also, um, you need signage. Think about that. So who's going to provide the signage? So we always have somewhere 
on site that's open. So it's usually the old dog and duck horse box bar. We tend to open that before the ceremony for at least half an hour. And it's just a focal point that when guests arrive at our farm, they know where to go. So wherever you're getting married, make sure that you're clear on where your guests are going to arrive to and who's going to be there to welcome them show them where to park, um, show them where the loos are, simple things like that, so that you're not having to worry about that. If you're having an earlier wedding and it's not really appropriate to open the bar or serve alcohol, a great idea is to have a welcome drink. So if you're going to get married um, at a venue like ours, say, we're out in the countryside, it's a good chance your guests won't have been here before. It's not um, a city centre obvious location. So have a think about your guests um, getting here. They're going to probably arrive a little bit earlier than you tell them to because they'll be worried about turning up late, getting lost, not finding the venue. So they will arrive a little bit earlier. Um, we've had guests arrive over an hour before ceremonies before. And that's fine, we can look after them. But it's a good idea to put a drink on for them, maybe. So if you're having an early morning ceremony, maybe think about having um, coffees on for them when they arrive. People have put pastries on before. Um, have a soft drink, or if it's maybe 11 o'clock when they're arriving and you don't want to serve an alcoholic drink, a mocktail is a good idea, something like that, just to welcome your guests and they'll start to enjoy the experience while they're waiting for you. It's not much fun for them just standing around waiting. Um, if you don't have anything sort of planned for them. So when your guests start to arrive, uh, make sure that you know who's going to move them to the ceremony area, wherever you're having your ceremony. So if you're at a venue like ours where there's multiple choices, so we have a beachside ceremony area, we have a paddock, some couples get married in the barn, it's entirely up to you, but just make sure um, there's a plan for moving your guests in the ceremony area. So usually your venue coordinator will do this for you, make sure you communicate plans. So we've had a situation where it started to rain. So the couple accelerated their ceremony. They were using a celebrant. So they accelerated their ce ceremony slightly so that they avoided the rain, um, but forgot to tell the venue staff. So there was quite a lot of hurriedly uh, pouring champagne and um, making arrangements when we heard the wedding party arrive. So just make sure you're communicating your ceremony plans. It's a good idea to um, have guests move in to the ceremony site a little bit earlier than you need. So we always try and get all guests into the ceremony area and seated at least 15 minutes before the bride or the groom is due to arrive. Um, and that's because you'd, you want to be sitting down and presumably facing the other direction. You don't want people still milling around trying to find their seats when um, you're arriving and ready to make your big entrance. You want them all sitting, waiting, ready and cameras posed and all eyes on you. So one little tip that we have um, if you're using a registrar for your wedding is remember that they'll need to speak to both of you before the ceremony. So they just need, it's part of their legal requirement. It's, it doesn't take very long. So they'll have a chat with one. We usually have one member of the wedding party on site. So greeting the guests. Um, sometimes our couples arrive together, but usually there's one there first. So they'll speak to them first and then they'll speak to the other member of the couple as they arrive. If you are doing that where you're going to have one person there already, we usually have a venue coordinator with a walkie talkie standing around the corner, making sure that all of the guests are out of the way. Um, and then we'll give you the nod to come in um, and make sure that that's all clear for you. So just make sure you know that um, somebody is coordinating that on the day. So I'm going to go over the page and we're going to go to you'll have your ceremony um, and then we have the signing of the register. So one of the things for couples getting married here, um, if you are getting married in the June, so we've got a beautiful beachside area, but it's it's an open area and there's not a covered uh, part of it. So you'll need to come back to the farm to sign your register. So if you are going to come back to the farm, you've got two options of what to do with your guests after the ceremony. So you can either leave them up in the dunes, uh, you come back with the registrar and you'll sign the register here and you can then go back up and join the party. Now we can serve drinks up there for you. If you take one of our drinks packages, we can do Prosecco or whatever you want, a beer trough, anything in the dunes. 
um, and we'll look after your guests up there while you're away so you don't need to worry about them. You come back down, whether you're walking down or you're using our vintage tractor, uh, you'll come back down, sign the book and go back up. That's great if you've got um, a lot of guests and you want photos maybe on the beach and you've planned in quite a bit of time, especially if you're having a slightly earlier ceremony and you've got a long time in the afternoon, it's a nice way to spend a bit of the time. Um, think about older relatives and um, kids, small kids as well. If you have a lot of people um, with children or a lot of elderly guests, it might be a good idea to bring those guests back down with you when you sign the book. They can then watch you sign on the veranda or wherever you're gonna sign. Um, they can watch you sign the book, get some photos, and they can um, also use the facilities. So we've got um, we've got compost loos up on the ceremony site, but we've got proper loos back down at the at the barn, and people can access drinks for kids and that sort of stuff. Um, it just might be a little bit easier for the floor if you've got a lot of children to have them brought back down to the farm where you can keep an eye on them, and um, it might be a little bit easier for your guests. Um, while you're back at the farm, you can have your drinks reception. So most people have the old dog and duck horse box bar open again. New this year. So because of the coronavirus <laughs> pandemic that we're all trying to forget about, but it has actually given us um, a chance to test out some new systems. So one of the systems that we've got now is um, we've got the old dog and duck horse box bar outside serving basic drinks and it's a bottle bar. Um, so you can get wine, beers, spirits, that sort of thing. If you want something a little bit more specialist, we can set you up um, maybe a gin bar or something next to it. But we can also take orders now from our main bar. So we'll have a couple of our staff wandering around with iPads so guests can book drinks from them. So they're not all having to queue up at the bar. So they can just catch one of our staff, place an order. We'll bring the drinks out um, so they don't have to worry about queuing up anymore so that's one of the things that we're quite excited about doing this year if you are serving canapes now's a great time to do it so um depending this is the drinks reception is going to be the bit that varies most in most weddings so if you're getting married at um your ceremony is going to be at say 11 o'clock in the morning um, your drinks reception maybe from 12 is going to be quite a long affair so you need to think about things that you're going to fill that up with. Um, you need to be thinking all of the time, if you're going to have a longer day, you must consider your guests. So you've got to have things planned in for them. Um, so they're not just standing around and, you know, it, it, it's a long day for them. So just think about their comfort and make sure people get fed. If you're having an earlier ceremony, they're probably not going to have food before they come. You might have guests who are coming from a, a long way, so they've not had time to stop and get breakfast. Um, so just think about their comfort. And if you're having a, a later meal, canapes are a great idea just to um, keep guests entertained and well fed. So it is quite entertaining because when people go around with trays of canapes, it's quite entertaining watching all of the guests focus on those canapes. Um, if you're having alpacas at your wedding, so we have our own team of alpacas who can come to your wedding. If you're having alpacas at your wedding, now's the best time to have them. They're great for um, mingling with the guests. They keep everybody amused. And when I say it's not for the kids, it's not for the kids. The kids love them, but it's the blokes. <laughs> they'll, they'll be the ones who'll be really wanting to go and give that alpaca a cuddle. Um, go and stroke it, but yeah, but they, they think that they have to have to let everybody else go first, but you can see them edging to get towards the alpacas. Um, the alpacas are great fun. They'll mingle amongst your guests. People can stroke them, maybe give them a bit of food. Um, and they're also brilliant for um, photographers. If you've got guests who don't like having their photos taken, they'll forget about it with an alpaca. I hate having my photo taken, but put me with an alpaca and I'm absolutely fine. So if you're having a celebrant as opposed to a registrar, and I'm going to cover this in another video, the difference between celebrants and registrars. If you're having a celebrant, um, you won't necessarily need to come back to the farm to sign the book. Um, so you don't do the legal vows there and then the celebrant. You would do that before or after or you a legal element to it. A video just pause there. I think we're back on. Um, so it's slightly different if you're having a celebrant, you can just stay over in the dunes or you can bring people back. Again, look through the wedding guidance and there's different options for different times and it'll give you some ideas on um, how you're going to 
run your day. The weather also plays a part of this. So one of the things that we always do is we always have a backup plan in place in case it's raining and you can communicate last minute, right, plan B, we're in the barn um, and we'll we'll have that sorted for you. So um, a few thoughts on games and things in the paddock. So like I said, if you've got a longer ceremony, you're probably going to want to keep guests entertained and how long is too long and it's it's easy to think you want to make the most out of your day and that's you know absolutely a great idea but you've got to be thinking about what what are you going to be doing through the day so if you've got um your ceremony at 11 o'clock drinks reception at 12 and you're not having your evening meal till maybe five o'clock that's a long time to entertain your guests so a few ideas that we've put into here and i've also done a pinterest board of these that i'll link to below um are some things that you can um do at the barn or anywhere else so we've got um what about picnic boxes so instead of canapes maybe get picnic boxes or we've seen picnic baskets and we know some great suppliers who can um hire these out and you can take them down to the beach and tell everybody right we're going to be back at the farm at and just sit on the beach if it's a nice day if not you can take them into the barn or anywhere and it's just a little bit more of a relaxed um afternoon um with a picnic people are getting fed and um they're happy so we've got alpaca drinks receptions which we've already talked about garden games uh always a big hit space hoppers um can be quite funny later on Music, why not have some music on the veranda? It takes the edge off. Um, some of the best weddings that we've seen have had music on the veranda. We've had people dancing around in circles before outside. It's been great. If you have a look on our website, you'll see some examples of this. Um, we've had a steel band on the beach. We've had a string quartet in the dunes. We've got loads of ideas. If you, if you want some inspiration on that, just let us know. So what about having some team games maybe on the beach? So just a little bit of light entertainment. So we work with um, companies who will do team building type games. So you're just having a bit of fun on the beach. Uh, it, it's all just something that can uh, that can keep your guests entertained. If you've got a lot of children, magicians are great for adults and children. If you've got a lot of children, we always recommend having an event nanny there. Um, an event nanny will take the pressure off your um, guests by corralling all of the children at the paddock having a teepee or something's great to keep those kids um entertained and an event nanny will look after the kids and just make sure that they're entertained so the parents can enjoy the day remember after lockdown especially that your um guests are going to be with the kids quite a long time so it's if if you are having them bring their kids to the wedding it's quite nice to have something for the kids it's also really nice for the kids to be amongst other kids and not sat on adult tables all the time um being bored with adults so photo booths uh great idea especially the new gif booths and the more interactive photo booths um we've seen some fantastic ones and cues for gif booths are unreal um people love them what about wedding bingo or a wedding quiz um casino tables we've had mini golf um caricaturists and an ice cream cart we've got an ice cream cart here that's um, available for you to use so there's a few ideas there's a whole page on this in the planning document so refer to that for some ideas but that was just to give you some some tips okay now we are going to get to the food so first i'm going to call it first food service and second food service so first food service is any food that you're providing in the afternoon now it is entirely up to you what you're going to provide for your guests so um you don't have to do two lots of food or you can make it a very simple um meal earlier you can have a bigger meal earlier and um, a lighter meal later on what i would suggest is if you're having an earlier wedding that you have something um round about one o'clock two o'clock so that guests who haven't eaten lunch um aren't having a drink and getting too tipsy um if you're having your wedding a bit later you can probably just serve a few canapes and then go straight into the evening meal um it is quite important it's, it's a big part it's what people remember is a big part of your wedding is the food so let's make sure you get it right and also let's make sure you don't over cater because we see that quite a lot and we've got a few tips for that coming up in just a minute on um how not to over cater uh for your wedding so 
If your ceremony is before one o'clock, we suggest you feed your guests something around lunchtime. So they're going to be drinking and not have lunch. So it's uh, quite important that you do that. A suggestion is um, providing a picnic box or a grazing box or an afternoon tea, something that they can enjoy outside on the beach, in the paddock, if the weather's nice. Um, if it's if you're substituting this for the evening food, you can just serve your main meal a little bit later as well. If your ceremony is between one and three, we think that canapes are probably a good idea in the afternoon. It just gives people a little bit of food to soak up some of the um, fizz that they're going to be drinking. And you're going to be having a big meal later on. So you don't want to overeat at that point and fill people up. So you'll have a lot of wastage later on if you do that. So um, maybe just something light like a canopy. If your ceremony is after three o'clock, you probably don't need to provide anything earlier um, because you'll be going into your meal. You can serve canapes at this point if you want to, but um, maybe a, like a sundown, a cocktail and a canopy is a good idea. Um, we had our ceremony at five o'clock and that's what we did. We did canapes and a cocktail and then um, later on, we just went straight into the meal. So you don't have to um, overfeed people. <laughs> We have an ice cream cart, as I've mentioned, um, and that's something that you can use to um, just break the day up a bit, especially if it's a nice day and you're going down the beach. Why not have um, just ice creams served? We can do a range of flavours and uh, it's a really nice touch with, it, with us being so close to the sea. So when you're planning your budget, factor that in. Um, it's, it's quite an important part of it. And that's what I say about when people are thinking we're going to have a, an all day wedding, it's cheaper anyway to have a registrar. I'm, I can't remember what the registrar fees are. That's something that you'll be able to find out from the registry office where you are, or if you're here, it's Annick Registry Office. But I think it used to be slightly more expensive at peak times through the day, which are the you know the one o'clock ceremonies, two o'clock ceremonies are quite popular. Um, so you might think it's going to save you money having that earlier on, but remember that you're probably going to have to factor in a lot more um, for your guests to keep them comfortable. So moving to the barn. So after your drinks reception, the bar will open. If you're getting married here, we tend to close the outside bar and open the inside bar and call your guests in. At this point, um, a lot of couples think that you're going to go into the barn when the food is about to be served. Give your guests some time to get seated, get a drink, get themselves sorted, go to the loo, find their seat. Even if you've got a really good seating plan, People can't always find their seat and you will get people wandering around um, looking for that. So you can either get people to come round to the bar and get a drink um, or we could put a table as they go into the bar so we can give them a drink. It's entirely up to you what you want to provide for your couples. And again, we'll do another video about food and drink and etiquette and, and what's a good idea. It's entirely up to you. But we've got a few um, a few helpful tips about that. So when you've got your bar open, your guests in, um, do you go straight into food or do you have speeches? Um, speeches are one where couples can do it usually one of three ways. So you'll either um, have your speeches before your meal, which is what we recommend. Um, you can do speeches throughout courses. So start a speech, main speech. That's something that we find quite difficult um, with caterers because speeches overrun. Do not listen to anybody that tells you they're only going to speak for five minutes because they'll either stand up and sit back down again straight away or they'll they'll overrun. Um, and that can cause a little bit of um, confusion with, well, not confusion, but it can cause a little bit of a delay for your food and it's um, caterers work to a specific time scale um, and you don't want your food spoiling. So we do find doing your speeches in one block is best. So either before or after the meal. Um, after the meal, I think for the people having the, doing the speeches, it's nice to get it away out of the way before the meal. So the tensions are off. Um, they can relax a bit during the meal. They can have a drink. Um, if they're nervous during the meal and they're having a little bit more to drink, um, that's going to reflect in the speeches. And it's, it's a personal choice. But my my sort of advice is to have the speeches before the meal, get them out of the way um, and everybody can sort of relax after that. Um, as well, putting a drink on the table. So if you're going to have your speeches, uh, provide maybe a, a welcome, uh, sorry, a, a toasting drink. So if you're putting wine on the table, um, people might just open it if there's nothing else to drink. So uh, you kind of want to keep that for the meal. So if you're having your speeches before, it's a good idea to maybe just pop a glass of Prosecco 
on the table um, for the guests. So we usually do it, there's, there's various ways of doing it. We can either pour individual glasses out we're a little bit of a more informal venue on that front and we tend to put an ice bucket with your Prosecco or champagne on the table um, and one of the members of the table will open the bottle um, and serve to the other guests so that's kind of the more informal relaxed way of doing it but it's entirely up to you we can do it either way so your main food service um, if your main food service is quite casual as in your guests are getting up and getting their own food. So if you've got a hog roast or um, we, we get all sorts, <laughs> to be honest, uh, we, but we get a lot of festival food, uh, fish and chips, that type of thing. So if they're doing that and they're getting up for a barbecue and getting their own food, we suggest having one of your ushers uh, is master of ceremonies, if you don't have a master of ceremonies and get them to call out one table at a time. So instead of them standing up and saying table one goes for their food table two table three just do it sensibly and say we're going to invite table one up for their food uh when table one are back could table two go and so on and then um you won't have a big queue outside waiting for the food um and people relax a little bit more um if you are having grazing tables or a kind of a buffet table something like that one tip that we have is that you don't put it against a wall so if you've got it against a wall, people are gonna walk along the line, get the food and off they go. If you've got it where people can go down both sides, you've got service much quicker. So we recommend uh, doing it that way. So when should your evening guests arrive? So your people are sitting down, your, your day guests are sitting down having their meal. I always think it's a little bit, it's, it's an etiquette thing really if you're you don't want your evening guests arriving until you've finished or pretty much finished your meal because they're going to be standing around they're watching you eat you you will get people who'll come over to the top table because they haven't seen you for so long and they want to talk to you and it's a little bit awkward eating your meal with the evening guests arriving um and popping over sitting down at a table with guests that they already no, that sort of thing. So we always recommend trying to finish your meal before your evening guests arrive. Now that doesn't always work in practice because delays in weddings happen. It's inevitable. Things overrun, speeches overrun, um, Uncle Bob will have lost something and somebody's car alarm's gone off in the uh, wedding party so they've got to nip out and things happen like that. So what we recommend you do is have a plan for when your evening guests arrive. So if it's a nice day, we recommend closing the barn doors and having the old dog and duck open outside and we'll have somebody on directing your evening guests to the old dog and duck where they can have a drink, you can provide that or they can just get their own drinks. And then when we get the nod that the meal's finished and clear up's happening, we'll start letting the guests um, into the barn and then it's a it's a much nicer experience for everybody. Uh, if it's a rainy day we've got a way to divert people around to our bar in the barn so that they're not coming near the tables and we've got some lovely new chairs in there so that they can just mingle in there. Great thing to do though is to possibly think about putting a drink on for them so if they are in the barn and everybody else is sitting having their meal it's quite nice for evening guests and it's not an expensive thing to do just to pop on um a few drinks for them so uh maybe just a, a glass of prosecco or a, a beer trough something like that it's just a, a nice thing to do if you're going to invite people um just to the evening so when we've got everybody in the outdoor yeah. bar closes the horse box hideaway cocktail bar opens so at this point um we start serving cocktails so we have a small range of cocktails behind the other bar um but we try to discourage people from necking too many cocktails early on um it's not in your interest to have too many drunken guests at eight o'clock so um we try and open that a little bit later so usually around about 7 seven thirty, when your evening guests are arriving we'll open the um the inside cocktail bar we're then going into first dance and music so your DJ or band or whoever you're doing, um, however you're doing it, sorry, they will help you with that. Um, they'll announce it for you. One thing to think about when you, if you're having your music starting, say, seven to eight o'clock, they obviously will need a break. Um, so they tend to do two sets. Uh, if they do that, make sure they've got some background music uh, to play. You just don't want quiet stretches once the music's started. 
finally, a note about evening food. Um, if you are providing evening food, we recommend uh, nine o'clock is always a good time to have it. We recommend no later than nine o'clock because um, after nine o'clock, people are getting into the full on party mode. Um, the drinks have kicked in, they're enjoying themselves, they're on the dance floor. Um, they're not going to want to leave and go and get food unless they're really hungry. But to be fair, if you've catered for them at five, six o'clock, they're not going to be that hungry. So if you're having evening food like pizzas, um, two ways that we've seen work quite well are pizzas, instead of each person going and getting a whole pizza, is having um, pizzas cut into slices so they can go and get a few slices of different types. That way they're not going to leave a load. The amount of pizzas that we see wasted um, at the end of the night because um, people just haven't eaten or they've gone back to the dance floor. So that's a good way of doing it. Um, you don't want to serve your food too late, but you don't want to serve it too early either. So nine o'clock is a good time and don't over cater. Um, your guests by this point will be having a great time. They'll be on the dance floor. Um, so you don't need to worry about doing another big meal in the evening. A few pizzas. Um, we've seen pie tables, pasty tables. Pas the cheese pasty table was probably one of the most popular evening food options that we saw, where the couple had just brought a load of cheese pasties in, um, stuck them on a table, and um, yeah, there were, were pasties everywhere after that one. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the, the main bulk of your wedding. Um, last orders, we always call last orders around about 11.30, and the bar closes at quarter to 12, and the barn closes at midnight. A note about buses. Um, so if you're having buses, it's a good idea to have the bus um, to leave around about quarter past midnight. So we close the barn at midnight. Um, you need to give people enough time to go to the loo, um, find all of their bits and pieces that they've just dropped around, the amount of clothes and coats and bags that get dropped around the barn, give people enough time to find those things and um, get on the bus. But you don't want to leave it too long because people will wander off um and they'll go and talk to people and we have had incidences where guests have just wandered off and missed their bus so you, you don't want that either if you're booking taxis get your guests to book them in advance we can help you with a list of that um but yes it's uh, a saturday night out in the sticks uh you want your taxi booked early okay so that's it um i encourage you to grab this document any questions about this like i say it's mainly aimed at uh couples who are getting married here at the barn in the bay but if um you're getting married elsewhere and you, you just need a bit of advice we're happy to give that and all of the information's below and yeah if you've liked this video if it's been useful pop a message below um like it save it just let us know and if there's anything else that we can help with with your wedding planning journey uh let us know that as well in the comments because we can always do a video to help you out with it so I hope that's been useful and I'll see you in another uh, video soon.